So, dear audience, you. you know him already, but please give him another welcome here on the stage. <laughs> I'm back again. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Marcus and Michael. Um, thank you all. So, um, I'm here. That, the, a core component of what I discussed earlier, the whisper demon and the receive system, is all the center of it is the uh, software library that has been developed by my friend Phil Karn, K9Q, who is unfortunately unable to enjoy, he's unable to enjoy, uh, join us today in person, but uh, he is here uh, online and uh, will be able, to, uh, hopefully will be able to, uh, if you want to, you can ask him some questions toward the end of this presentation. Um, the, uh, I wanted to, uh, that we have a, uh, not over, over uh, run my time like I did the last time. Um, Phil has been a, a significant contributor to the amateur radio community for many years. And uh, I was fortunate to meet him uh, last year when I uh, <coughs> discovered his uh, software library and uh, was able to, with a lot of help from him and others, integrate it into Whisper Demon. And, and what is it, okay? I think uh, the idea is that it is a software library. It's uh, Linux-based. It runs mostly as a, a user application. And it, uh, it, it utilizes a, uh, a technique not unique to, uh, to Phil, but I think he has uniquely implemented it for us uh, uh, to use what's called fast convol uh, convolution. By, by uh, what fast convolution uh, does is he takes the uh, incoming data stream, either uh, samples or IQ samples, and uh, performs an FFT on it in real time on the whole of the stream. And uh, this is a, a CPU expensive operation. Uh, but uh, modern computers, modern CPUs, even, the, uh, even 10 year old CPUs I have, have remarkable computational capabilities. And uh, using uh, open source MI, uh, FFT library, uh, he is able to do all of the signal processing in software on even pretty modest. Uh, you can, you can um, uh, depending upon the uh, receiver you use and the bandwidth of, of, of the received channel, uh, you, can, you can do uh, RTL SDRs and, and uh, AirSpy HFs are easily run on a Pi 4. Uh, easily run. Uh, uh, you can uh, you can go up to Pi four. Pi five can can do a sixty four mega sample. So you can do a full thirty megahertz, zero to thirty megahertz receiver, simultaneous receiver, delivering literally hundreds of output channels, independent of output channels, on a Pi five from one uh, uh, input. Um, you know, an I-86 uh, class machine from 10 years ago, you can go to, uh, uh, you know, full uh, up to six meters uh, direct sample. So it's, it's uh, really extraordinary how much, uh, how much processing uh, is performed. The, the, the core of it is, is uh, that you take a fast Fourier transform of blocks, now, this is not my area of expertise, so Phil would have to answer it. But I, I, as I recall, he he's, uh, divides the incoming uh, sample stream into 50 millisecond blocks. There's 10 milliseconds of overlap. This is a default setting. Um, and, and then uh, you, you end up with a, a set of frequency bins, right, with uh, the com complex uh, uh, phase for across the whole spectrum. Then when you, if you determine which signals you want to, uh, uh, you, which signals you want to tune to, which ones you want to output, then you select just those frequency bins, the, which is a small subset of this, you know, of the, of the, of the thousands of uh, millions of, of bins that are created each, uh, each second. You, a, a small subset, you convert them back into the time domain inverse Fourier transform, perform your uh, operations and demodulations. But because you're only working on a very small subset of the total input stream, at that point, it's computationally not very intensive. So th this technique that he's using 
uh, I think was, I, I've heard it was first described uh, maybe here at the SDR Academy by Phil Harmon, I think maybe even 10 years ago. But uh, I, I, this is, uh, this Phil's implementation I just became aware of last year. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's front end, you, uh, there's a lot of computation, but on a, on a Pi 5 running uh, 64 mega samples, 30 megahertz, about uh, maybe 25% of the CPU is, is used by uh, K9Q. So the rest of the CPU is available for, signal, for other signal processing and user interactions. So um, the, it, it's a library. So he has created a, uh, there's a set of, as a configuration file, it, it is, there's no GUI interface here. This is, a, this is a, a tool, a software library for developers like myself. For, I, for, I came to it looking for a successor to the Kiwi. Kiwi is a wonderful device, but it has only uh, eight output channels. And it's a shame to dedicate a Kiwi, which has all kinds of other wonderful features. It's a shame to, to dedicate a Kiwi to just decoding Whisper. So, um, I was looking for, and, and it also can only do eight, eight, eight channels at a time. So I, um, I when I found, a, uh, I was introduced to Phil's software, and uh, and also I learned from a friend, same friend, uh, Clint, K9Q, uh, K7OEI, uh, introduced me to both Clint and the ARX triple eight, and. Clint hadn't heard about it, but uh, uh, before, I guess, I introduced him to it, and it was the perfect solution. Phil other supports a whole range of SDRs, though. They, it's not, uh, they, his library works with, um, with, uh, with uh, uh, well, Fifi's, SDR plays, um, uh, Air Spies, uh, I don't know, a whole, uh, a whole bu bunch of, he has drivers for many things. So if you have a receiver, SDR, it's likely that, you know, that Phil's software can, uh, uh, you can uh, talk to it and, and, and output streams. So you'll get uh, uh, what, what comes from it, um, though his, his output is, uh, well, he, he's showing you the various parameters that uh, you can adjust, uh, configure in his configuration file. Uh, I have never change the FT, FFT overlap. Uh, so that doesn't, you know, these, these, each of these bin sizes, you know, 40 hertz bin, those are the, the defaults he chose. I knew nothing, no reason to change them uh, for, for uh, whisper decoding uh, purposes. Um, the, uh, as you can see, there's uh, different parameters that are uh, uh, appropriate for different SDR receivers and different bandwidths. You go on. The core of his is a Linux service called Radio D. It's a daemon. If you're, I assume most of you are familiar with Linux daemons. Uh, these are programs that run autonomously. My Whisper daemon is an example of such a program. They are started by Linux. They can be configured to start it uh, by every time Linux starts up or restarts. These uh, are started up and run independently. So they, daemons don't requ require a user interface. One interacts with them uh, through a uh, command line interactions. Uh, and uh, the, in, in uh, Phil's case, uh, those, uh, those, the configuration file lives in a subdirectory. There's a single file that has a whole bunch of blocks in it where you define what uh, uh, what channels, what bands you want to uh, tune to, what the receive device is, if it's a triple eight or a uh, uh, SDR player or an AirSpy, you define it in this configuration file. Um, the, uh, the output of this is uh, demodulated output. It outputs a variety of forms, as, uh, but the typical one is PCM audio. And these come out as uh, IP multicast streams. And uh, the, which by, by transmitting the, uh, each demodulated channel as a multicast stream, that means that there can be multiple listeners to the same channel. So you could have uh, uh, the core of, of, of an architecture that's possible 
would be to have uh, one SDR, uh, uh, Kiwi SDR, serving multiple different kinds of receivers. You could have SDR Sharp and SDR Console or whatever, H HD SDR. If they were, if they had the ability to accept a multicast, an IP multicast stream as their input, instead of baseband audio or something, then uh, then they could they could be uh, you could have multiple received device listening simultaneously. In principle, and one of the goals that I have is to be able to run Radio D and let people at a site and let remote users use your favorite. Uh, you know, GUI SDR program, and uh, but um, all of the communications in in this uh, are done through uh, control and status and data come through IP multicast. This is an almost pure multicast IP uh, multicast interaction uh, device. So you can dynamically monitor each of your channels. I, I'm working to uh, utilize information about the number of overloads to, uh, that are being occur occurred so that we can better adjust and uh, optimize receive sites to avoid overload events and such. So these, uh, you can dynamically create channels, uh, which is something I want to do so we don't have to have the whisper configuration the same as the... Uh, uh, as, as Radio D's configuration, just have one configuration file. But um, in, in all cases, uh, in all the cases I think I know of, I'm trying to think of, I think all of this input all comes through a USB, uh, the USB input driver. So USB input up to, you know, three gigabits per second coming in over USB 3 connection. Uh, and the output are multiple uh, multicast uh, uh, packets, and uh, there's a, those packets can carry can can be the result of either AM SSB, you know, standard linear demodulations. That's one kind of output you can define. Uh, there's also FM demodulators. There's uh, the um, uh, there's both narrow band, there's also a wide band FM demodulator, um, and, the, uh, and then there's, uh, he has a spectrum output. Recently, um, John Melton, I think it is, G0, who did the, I think he did HDSDR, has, uh, has added a very uh, uh, simple version, but extremely useful, a GUI. G zero R uh, yeah G G zero O R X, uh, so we are uh, you you can run there's a web page that's associated when this is installed there's a web page so you have a, a spectrum view of uh, of what the uh, the radio is uh, radio D is is delivering and seeing, so this is um, so this is a a really powerful especially. Uh, in debugging a site where you want to understand the, the uh, ingress of noise, the noise levels, uh, RFI sources, and so on, being able to look at a whole zero to 30 megahertz spectrum is almost essential. You cannot have, I, I don't know how you could optimize in, in, uh, a receive site without having such a, a view. The Kiwi has a be beautiful zero to 30 hertz megahertz spectrum. This one is pre-alpha, but it's enough that it's extremely useful uh, to tell you about the, the problems which, uh, you know, uh, which you would not otherwise see about RFI input. This is, here's an example of, of the configuration file. Uh, the, there is a global section where you kind of define what hardware is attached. These are uh, the square brackets define each of these uh, uh, blocks. There's, you have to have a global block that says what kind of hardware, what is the SDR that's attached to this. And then there's a block for that SDR device describing its uh, settings. And uh, beyond that, there's all the rest of these uh, blocks are defined different demodulators. In this case, on this page, he's showing the, a block that defines a uh, whisper, de whisper demodulators. Uh, this is a, uh, he's uh, said, the output stream, the PCM samples, it's going to be uh, upper sideband. It's going to uh, output on 
this multicast stream, whispered, the name of which is whisper-pcm.local, that becomes a IP address 239 something or other. Through, um, but there's, uh, then uh, we have found that uh, using his, uh, his filters, the audio filters implemented in his library, that the whisper uh, audio bandwidth is best set for 1300 high pass and 1700 low pass. So it's a sample rate. Whisper uses uh, uh, t uh, 12 kilosamples, 16-bit uh, PCMs. That's, uh, and then here's a list of frequencies. And you can see there's in that list of frequencies, this, he has a, a list of um, you know, one megahertz, there's a, a 160 through, it looks like uh, 10 meters. Every, every band, in, including the 22 meter band, the 13 megahertz band is listed in there. All of those are being demodulated, okay, and output on that stream simultaneously. I mean, this, this is, uh, uh, so there's one multicast stream that contains all of these. And there's some utility programs uh, included that allow you to receive that multicast stream and record it to like WAV files or to type it to standard out and so on. So there's ways to take it. In my case, in Whisper Demon's case, and uh, we turn off the AGC, but there's, he has an excellent AGC if you're doing uh, uh, audio listening, uh, the AGC is appropriate. But for digital communications purposes, for whisper and IQ recording, you really can't use AGC. So I, I turn the AGC off. There's a gain setting, 60 dB is, there's a, that's a whole day's worth of subject topics right there. Whether to turn, how to turn off AGC and set it properly. But this is, this is a simple text file. This is the core of how you configure his, his library. Um, Here's a list of, of uh, devices that he's, he supports. I'm, I, have it, I have it running. Uh, I have actually have uh, four instances of RadioD running on four computers. Now, there's one limitation is there's only one device attached to each computer. So if you have two SDRs, you need two computers. They could be two Pi 4s. You know, they don't have to be big computers. And, and if you have lots of antennas, you'll need a SDR per antenna, but you actually can feed, because it's IP, you can, you can do all of the whisper decoding on one powerful computer, but just have a lot of little uh, 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 computers just service each of the SDRs. And that's what I'm doing at, at KFS in California where there's a large antenna system. I have, uh, I have four SDRs, I have a Kiwi, that doesn't go through Radio D. But I have a, a, a RX888 on one computer. I have a, a SDR play on another one and, and an AirSupply HF Plus uh, on the other. So I can actually look, and you could look in, on in WhisperNet, to compare the performance of, of, of the four different receivers. They're fed it, the same RF that comes out of a passive splitter, goes to these four devices, and they, they go to four decoders for uh, instances. And um, su surprisingly to me, uh, the, uh, the SDR play does, uh, is, is the worst, <laughs> and by a very small amount, like it's two or three dB worse than the other two. Um, the, but the, I was surprised that the uh, HF Plus didn't do uh, significantly better than the uh, Kiwi or, or, uh, S, S, uh, or the uh, uh, RX888. But you can see there's a whole bunch of, of, of these um, devices that, uh, and it's not limited to shortwave by any means. You can, you can set up one of these to do VHF. I know Phil may discuss about this. Is what he's the changes he's made in the last year. But I wanted to say what he he can do because of the flexibility of the system. He has um, small computers, I, I, maybe Raspberry Pis, one for each VHF band. He he sets up a uh, a S, uh, receive channel, FM receive channel, on each of the 200 uh, channels, uh, radio uh, FM channels, on each of those bands. He has a way to trigger it so that it only records when there's signal there. But he has years of every conversation on, on, on the uh, 
the 70 centimeter repeaters, every, so every conversation has been recorded to a hard disk. So the system is so powerful and there are features that he hasn't even started to talk about in terms of triggered recordings that are available to you that allow you to do things that I think uh, I, I had never imagined were possible. Anyway, he has been working now. He has made, our, in the last year, Phil has been very active. He's done a lot to help me uh, make, integrate his, uh, and make Whisper Demon utilize his, uh, his library. Um, and uh, he, in the process, I think he's learned that there are certain areas where the, he was using multicast everywhere. He's not using it uh, to communicate from the, the, the raw USB samples to the decoders. Um, that was, he was double copying things. It was, you know, just didn't, didn't but, but the power of multicast is, is something that uh, I think is uh, really uh, un unrecognized by many. It, uh, he's here's some uh, yeah the here's some of his current uses. Uh, he's talked about I talked about the narrowband FM monitoring. I think some of this is uh, in, in the United States stimulated by there's been misuse of our uh, abuse of our uh, ham radio channels by some people, and uh, there's been uh, you know a, a, an effort to identify the intruders and misusers, uh, having a recording of everything that is uh, being transmitted. I mean, it has to be in the clear and it's publicly available. So uh, there's, I do know, not Phil, but I know people who are doing this in the United States to deal with uh, uh, misuse of the amateur radio bands. So I don't think, I hope you don't have this problem here in Europe, but uh, we, we do, uh, we have had this problem in the United States. So that's one of the motion. For me, of course, it's the whisper usage. Uh, the uh, Phil actually includes decoders for uh, FT8 and FT4, so he can decode every FT8 and FT4 channel, every whisper channel, uh, and do other recordings at the same time on a 10-year-old i5. I mean, the, the problem is no longer getting the signals. It's ext what, where to store them and how to extract and, and get to notice which signals are of interest and importance. Uh, the, uh, that's been the real, whoops, real challenge. I don't know, I somehow popped into a different, uh, how did I get here? <laughs> uh, I touched, I touched something wrong. And I don't know Windows, so I can't. <laughs> oh, good, okay, thank you. Um, the, um, uh, we've been doing, uh, as I, we've been used to utilizing his software as part of that uh, Ham, uh, Wisp, Ham Sci, uh, great project in the monitoring of WWV. Um, there's uh, also the opportunity, of, if those of you who are familiar with the Web SDR system, this is a, a closed source system, but a very popular system around the world of uh, 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 SDR system. Uh, that uh, called a web SDR developed by a professor in the Netherlands and his, I don't know his name, but, but uh, uh, we have been able to, uh, Clint and others, uh, Jan who's, uh, and uh, Luke who are here have uh, one such system running where the, uh, we have a single triple eight feeding a, a web SDR that has all eight bands of, of the ham bands. And, and, the complete ham band. So if any of you are familiar with the web SDR, which is a, a particularly popular with, uh, with uh, ham operators because of the extremely low latency through the system. Uh, Phil's software in and of itself, I mean, the, f the fundamental latency is determined by the block sizes and a little bit of extra processing, but it's in the, it's in the uh, small number of milliseconds. It's a, Anyway, those are some of the uses. Um, huh. Holger, there you are. <laughs> this is uh, Phil. Well, last year, Phil was here in person, and we went up to Holger OE7GHV's uh, Radio Hill. And Phil was most. I think this is the thing that impressed him the most about our visit. It was all of the uh, GPS receiver blocks you had outside your shack. I think I have.
taken up most of my time. I, I hope Clint, or, uh, Clint, uh, Phil, I, I don't know if Phil is there, and uh, uh, wanted to add any comments to what I've put up. Uh, can we? Oh, there you are. Hello. Okay. Yeah, oh. I'm here. Okay. Hi. I, uh, I just I wanted to you say hi. Hello, Phil. <laughs> oh, you did fine. You did fine. Um, anyway, yeah, if all goes well, I'll be there again next year. But uh, thanks for, for doing this. Uh, I think you did a good job, and it was interesting to hear it described from the point of view of a, uh, of a user. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? You may raise questions now. No questions? Okay, we're not going to... Well, if you have anything that comes up, or if you want to utilize uh, Phil's software, uh, there's a community, there's a... a uh, he has a, um, a, a Groups I.O. forum, or a, a, a forum that uh, is pretty active. Uh, and I and other users of uh, this library are available to help. But I think it's really um, uh, having, by migrating all of the, uh, the signal processing into software, uh, there's a tremendous, you know, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility in terms of what you can do with the, uh, with the, uh, with, with the architecture. I have one question. In other circumstances, I have experienced problems with the IP stack in the software of the, of the, of the computers. So you rely on your data coming in packets at an equal pace, okay? And you move a window, you write something to a file, and all of a sudden, there's a gap in the packets, and then they come as a burst. So what do you about, so there must be some buffering, and, and this increases the latency, so I was somewhat surprised about the millisecond second latency because if you fight against those those, those bursts and, and uh, delays in the incoming data you end up with, with buffering schemes that increase the latency I, I hate this problem in another context yeah yeah this this is uh, Rob actually overstated a little it's not few milliseconds the, the basic block time is typically 20 milliseconds and if you run this all on a real-time version of the Linux kernel, which I do, um, the delay out to the speaker is usually about 100 milliseconds or so. With most of that delay at the, um, uh, right, at the right, right before the DDA converter going to the speaker, because that's where all the delays have to be smoothed out. It's called a payout buffer. So the end-to-end -end delay is on the order of 100 milliseconds. I, I can watch my the, the real time clock on my computer and listen to WWV and to my ear the ticks occur at the same time as the numbers changing on the screen. So I think that's pretty good. So, so the, the, the key is the real time of a kernel. So, so yes. the key is the real time kernel. Yes, absolutely. And the kernel on the Raspberry Pi is real time as far as I can tell. Yeah. In, in the case of Whisper Demon recording, uh, we always record uh, uh, the SDRs are, are GPS discipline. So what I what I do is I record exactly the same number of of, uh, of blocks, a number of of, of, of uh, decoded blocks in each minute. So each minute I get 1.44044 bytes. Okay, I, I record a series of one minute long. They, they, and, and since those blocks, the timing of those blocks, okay, is determined by the, uh, by the GPS discipline oscillator. So the whole system, there's an offset, but the whole system is actually driven from the GPS discipline. Now there can be varying latencies, although I never see it more than a few, mil, uh, five to 10 milliseconds in latency about when files are written. But, uh, but the whole system maintains GPS synchronization over days and weeks. I mean, I've never, I haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't really, beyond that, I haven't even bothered to check. But uh, you, can, you can, the recordings, that what comes out of this, absolutely gives you part per billion, you know, uh, actually accurate recorded files. It's, it's remarkable to me that, uh, that uh, the whole system works as reliably and stably as it does. So. It really is. I should tell you, Rob, that I finally have one of my triple eights actually being driven from GPS. 
And so I've just been watching the ionosphere move up and down last night on WWV's carrier. That's fun. Oh. I can see why you're so interested in it. I, I, well, I don't listen to it. My hearing is so poor. Well, you, can, <laughs> you can see it. I can see it, yeah. And you can see it in the, in the recordings, that, at the uh, ham side recordings of, that we mm -hmm. make from your system. Okay, I think we've, there's another question. Uh, okay, but hurry, please. Because we're a little running out of time. I tried to keep it short. I'm a, I'm a very enthusiastic user of Radio D together with my colleague here. And uh, we built, uh, and, and I want to uh, take the opportunity to thank you for making this available because we have a lot of fun with it. We built a complete uh, Whisper Demon uh, receiver for all the bands for, for Rob and for his research. But we also did uh, implement the WebSDR implementation as, uh, as been described by uh, Clint. And uh, that is working now uh, for three months and it's experimental. And I will, uh, well, I want to encourage everybody here in Europe to, uh, to build this, uh, this and, and having the same fun we have now with it. So I'm offering everybody who wants that uh, to, help, uh, to help them out. Great, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. We so run out of time. We? <laughs> yep. So thank you very much. Okay. Applause to our two contributors. Thanks so thanks so much. <laughs>